So I personally have always thought that if you have the skill of coding, if you know how to code, then you will be able to use that skill to generate um, more income, step up your income, and really use that skill to, and be able to monetize it in ways that people who don't have that skill just really can't. So in this video, I wanna break down my eight favorite ways of being able to monetize your coding ability to create more income. This is for people who are really trying to take their income level up a notch. And this isn't just like going and asking your boss for a raise, but these are more ways that you can do outside of work and ways that you can actually focus on and turning them into an extra source of income. So let's jump into the eight ways. So first is by doing something which is a little bit more active than passive. It's by doing either a YouTube channel, a blog, or a podcast. So YouTube is actually a great way to generate more passive income. Obviously with any of these ways though, just like YouTube, it's going to take a lot of time to build that channel up, build an audience up, and be able to generate the income necessary to, if you wanted to use it to replace your nine to five, it would take a while for you to be able to do that. On YouTube, you have to meet certain standards before you can even start monetizing. YouTube's a great way to visually interact with and build up a community. A blog is a great way to drive traffic and either be that paid or organic traffic to your blog, and then you can advertise affiliate marketing. And then a podcast is kind of in the same realm. It's a lot harder to market a podcast. If you created a very niche coding podcast, for example, like if you created a niche podcast where you interviewed machine learning engineers and that's all you did, and then you just had a machine learning podcast, then that could attract a lot of people who are in machine learning, machine learning and AI, obviously a huge field. So if you were able to do that, you'd be able to attract that audience, that subset and really generate income through, whether it be through sponsored deals, you could sell your own merchandise as well. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Obviously these ways are a lot more passive than the other ways, but they do require a lot of upfront work. So number two is actually through freelancing. So freelancing is really popular with different sites such as Fiverr, um, Upwork, uh, as well as Guru. So freelancing for me is the easiest way that I can see that you'll be able to replace your nine to five income. Obviously freelancing, you can spend a lot of hours depending on the client, depending on who you're actually working for. But if you are freelancing, you have that opportunity to replace income and be able to, even if you just wanna do it as just something to do on the weekends, if you don't have anything to do on the weekends, you can definitely freelance on the weekends, make a couple hundred extra bucks each weekend. So freelancing is great. I'd recommend checking out any of those sites. I would recommend starting with Upwork. Fiverr isn't, I mean, if you're coding, you're not gonna get paid very much. Upwork is more serious clients, bigger clients as well. So I recommend checking out Upwork and Guru first. And then if you are just wanting to branch out and kind of just find whatever you can, then you can head over to Fiverr. So the third one is actually by teaching other people coding skills. I think a big misconception with coding is that you don't know very much. I mean, a lot of beginners and a lot of people who are probably intermediate don't think that they're at a level where they can teach other people. But the fact of the matter is, is that no matter what stage you're in, as long as you know a little bit, you know enough to be able to teach somebody else something. This is one where, I mean, if you're gonna be teaching people live and be tutoring and stuff, which is a way, I mean, you can tutor local colleges, local schools, you can set up your own tutoring online. But if you're gonna be tutoring people, you're probably gonna to wanna to be able to understand a little, you're gonna to wanna to have a little bit more intermediate advanced level knowledge. I mean, as long as you know something, you probably know more than most people do that are just barely starting. For example, if you've been practicing coding for six months, then you know more than the people who are just barely starting. I mean, if you've been practicing for a year, then you know more than the people who have been doing it for six months. And I mean, it just keeps going on. Being able to teach and tutor other people is a good way that you can monetize your skill. As well with teaching other people, you can create your own course. 
You can do this on platforms such as Udemy, Skillshare, as well as if you just wanted to set up your own website and kind of use paid advertising, you could set up your own website, host a course there. I mean, it doesn't really need to be a very in-depth course. You could just set up, for example, if you wanted to teach Python, you could just say, create a course that's like the basics of Python. I mean, it really only needs to be about four hours. You don't need to charge very much either if you're just teaching basics. More advanced stuff can probably be a higher price. But being able to do that, Udemy allows you to they kind of host it as well as do all the promotion for you. You just have to create the content and upload it and try and just drive a little bit of traffic from yourself by yourself. Okay, so my next way is by doing coding contests. And this is probably the way that I would least recommend trying to make extra money unless you are just 100% confident in your skills. I mean, if you go look on websites such as Kaggle, just personally my favorite to kind of do coding contests. They host free coding contests as well as paid. Some of them pay up to like $100,000. For example, the NFL Big Data Bowl is happening right now and that's paying out um, around $100,000. And I mean, you can make a lot of money doing it, but the thing is, is there's gonna be so many people trying to do it. I mean, $100,000 is a lot of money. So there's gonna be a lot of competition doing it. If you are really skilled in a certain language or in machine learning, then being able to use those skills, enter those competitions if you feel really confident in yourself. As well on Kaggle, there's free competitions you can enter. You can also always try looking up different hacking competitions. Some companies will offer a monetary, re a monetary reward if you can do like some sort of hacking, if you can get into their system. Okay, so number five is actually my favorite way of being able to create your own business and creating your own agency business. So what an agency is, is you find, for example, local businesses that are in need of web design, for example, and you approach them and say, hey, I was looking at your website and I noticed that you could change some things here, here, and here and you can charge clients anywhere between $1,000 to $2,500 for a web design revamp. You could probably do consulting uh, for businesses, help them set up databases, help them set up backends for different things. So being able to, or even just kind of building them a website or building them a whole system. I mean, if you're skilled in that, you can charge thousands and thousands of dollars. Number six is by creating WordPress themes and plugins. So there's so many websites going up on the internet each day. There's always a new website being built. WordPress is one of the most popular website content management systems that you can use. So if you can find a way to make people who are making websites make their life easier, you can do this by building themes. So if you build a nice theme for say, podcasters if you build a nice podcasting theme you can put you can put that on the marketplace and then people can buy it for 20 bucks if you sell that theme for 20 dollars 50 times then i mean that's a thousand dollars and if you're able to code like that obviously with so many websites going up if it's a nice looking theme if it's popular then it'll definitely generate more than just 50 sales thinking of those things and kind of just thinking of ways that like if you're having trouble being creative in this part, you can definitely just say, okay, like if I were making a website or just go through the process of making a website. And if you're having trouble making that website and like stuff's taking you along, think like, okay, how can I use my coding skills here to make this task easier for myself? Because I guarantee if you need it, there's more people out there that are gonna need some sort of automation or task management or anything like that. So jumping on to number seven is actually, it's a more popular way and it's I think it's something that a lot of people try, but it's through building apps. So this could be a mobile app or it could be a web-based app. The way that you're going to be able to generate income through apps is by doing, by creating a subscription-based app. So with web-based app, so with things such as Spotify, Webflow, Squarespace, Jungle Scout, those are things that you pay a monthly subscription and they're just web-based apps or mobile apps as well that allow you to um, perform different actions. So you don't, I'm not saying you need to go create those apps. Being able to create a web-based app 
or even a mobile app. I mean, mobile app developers are in really high demand because of how mobile the world is. I mean, everybody has not it seems like everybody has a phone. Everybody's spending five plus hours on their phone. I mean, phones are an addiction. If you can create an app that people are constantly using, whether that be an app that's helping them in their business, helping them in their daily lives, that they're subscribing to month over month over month. I mean, that's just recurring revenue. And the more customers you come in, the higher your monthly pay is gonna be. So obviously you don't need to go out and create the next Spotify, the next Uber, but being able to create that, I mean, you can really scale that up as high as you want. And as well, Swift, the languages that you can use um, for the different apps, such as Swift, Java, C++, those are languages that are in demand and they have really high salaries for them. So if you're interested in creating mobile apps, I definitely recommend going and learning the language first, just specializing in a language such as Swift or going and learning. If you know JavaScript, I would as well recommend learning React. So those are two languages that you can use to build apps. So the last one is actually something that's a lot more passive. It's by creating an ebook. So if you have any sort of knowledge, any sort of skill, any sort of work experience that you think you could put into an ebook, you can literally write an ebook um, that is 10,000 words, 5,000 words, and you can type that up and then you can put it on Amazon or on a couple other ebook hosting platforms. And that can just be really passive income. For example, if you had experience in machine learning, you could write an intro to machine learning ebook. And that would allow you to really just use your skills. And just like a lot of these are, you're using your skills to create opportunities for others or help others solve problems. And with the eBooks, the exact same. You'd be able to set it up and you can basically just generate revenue from your eBook. I mean, you can't really make a ton of money off eBooks um, very quickly, but it's something that you can set up. I mean, if you wrote five eBooks, you could charge them at $10 each. And I mean, it'd just be extra money coming in, an extra income stream. So those are my eight ways of making money with coding. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. I come out with a lot of cool coding and tech and passive income productivity style videos. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching. See you in the next one.